Do you struggle sometimes with the uncertainty of life? We don't really know what could happen tomorrow. The future is uncertain, even though we try so hard to control it. We don't have the authority over everything, even though we wish we did. Today, we have access to a massive amount of information, but we still can't control all our circumstances, how other people behave, nor everything that happens in our lives. And let's face it, that makes us feel vulnerable and sometimes uncertain, and none of us like that. Today, my devotional is to help us grow a deeper peace in our hearts as we look at Scripture and be reminded that we are not alone. This is a challenge for all of us. Some of us, hey, we're control freaks, but there is a better way to live our lives. So we're not blinded by this desire for control and a craving for certainty. We know that these things, they just create more chaos for us. Ironically, we experience more freedom and a deeper joy when we release our desire for control to the one who has all control, but he's not controlling. The good and sovereign God who's above it all and loves us dearly. I want to take us back to that place in Genesis chapter 3. You know, to the story when God created humanity. He gave humanity a beautiful place to live with all of their needs taken care of. He gave humanity authority to care for His creation. It says to rule and subdue, but not to control one another. And then He gave them one rule, which was to be free to eat from any tree of the garden, but not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the day they ate of it, they would certainly die. Now, that seems pretty straightforward to me, but Adam and Eve, they broke that one rule. A serpent deceived Eve. He lied to her and said to her, no, you will not die. He basically challenges the very words of God. And Eve believes the serpent instead of trusting God. She believed that if she ate the fruit, she would become like God, even though she and Adam were already made in the image of God. They seek to increase their control rather than to remain dependent on God's provision. Eve ate the fruit and she gave some to her husband. And for the first time, they experienced shame. They used to walk in the garden naked. The weather must have been perfect, right? I'm thinking 82 degrees. But still, they experienced no shame and no fear. But after they disobeyed God, they hid from God, and they made clothes from leaves to cover up their bodies. Then they turned on each other, choosing to blame instead of reflecting on their actions and asking God to help them. And what was God's response? Let me read to us from this very short line in verse 9. It says this, So the Lord called out to the man and said to him, Where are you? I got to hear that. Where are you? Isn't that wonderful? I love this. God knows our hearts. He knew what would happen in their disobedience. They hide. He comes looking for them. He always does. God is faithful. When we act out of our own craving for control, when we take matters into our own hands, we often make a mess. We manipulate people. We force circumstances. We fiddle with the things of this world. We try to use our knowledge and all of our abilities to make things work out our way, don't we? We might get some things right, yes, but often we make a bigger mess. And, but when we do, we have a loving God who comes and pursues after us. He doesn't leave us there in our mucky situation. This is why Jesus came into the world, not only to come close to us, to be with us, but also to save us from shame and to give us a new life. And He modeled for us how we can be obedient and dependent on a good and loving Father. He showed us what's possible when we trust God with everything, including our vulnerability and even our worst suffering. When you think about it, Jesus shows us that obedience to our Heavenly Father is the best way to deal with our anxieties and our fears about the future. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus told the Father, Not my will, but your will be done. Jesus was willing, as Paul says, to be obedient even to the point of a shameful death on the cross. 
That's how much Jesus believed and trusted the good, good Father. And by His example, you and I can believe and trust that God is good even when we feel uncertain about our situation, even when we feel insecure or vulnerable, even when every cell in our body is screaming to take matters in our own hands. Even in those moments, we can trust. With the help of the Holy Spirit, we can say no to our cravings and say yes to our loving God. We can remember we have a God who is sovereign over all, and He walks with us in every single circumstance, good and bad. And He's always walking with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. It's a promise that He gives us. And as you can see in Genesis chapter 3, God pursued Adam and Eve when they disobeyed. God doesn't change. So, of course, He pursues you and me. We can live by His unlimited wisdom. As much as we know, we don't know everything. We don't love perfectly. We're not as good as we like to be. We're not as reliable. We can't live forever. There's so much that we have so little control over, right? But He, remember, I'm saying this again. We have to remember this. He has control over everything, and He's not controlling. He's generous. He's kind. He's gentle. He's patient and loving, always. And that gives me a great deal of peace. To take a deep breath, take it with me, Right? Take a deep breath and trust. Trust whatever is worrying you today to Him. If you feel overwhelmed with fears about the future, fears about the unknown, or you're frustrated because things aren't happening the way you expected, rest. Rest in giving that thing, that person, that situation or concern to the Lord. I too have to practice this daily. In a way, we're always in the garden, like Adam and Eve, with a choice before us to either trust God or trust ourselves or this world. And choosing Him, is, it's always the better choice. Remember, James tells us that if we ever lack wisdom, we can ask God because He's always eager to give us wisdom. In those places where we feel stressed, we can always come to Him. So today, let's take a moment to pray. And first of all, to thank God for pursuing us. Because if we feel distant, we can always even ask God to open our minds and our hearts to feel His presence because He's always near us. Then also let's pray for one another because, hey, we need each other. That we would be self-aware of our tendency to want to control or blame each other or hide in shame. Let's encourage one another with the truth. We are free in Christ. Nothing can change that. We can be vulnerable to one another and to Him who was vulnerable for us. He's trustworthy, always. Let us pray. Father, we thank You for Your beautiful example of the story that reminds us how much you pursue us, how much you love us. We confess that we want to control our circumstances, God, and we make a mess. So we want to give to you whatever it is in our hearts that is burdening us today. And we ask, Lord, that you would return to our hearts your peace. We thank you, Lord, for this really good reminder that we all need on a daily basis. Thank you for your love, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you can see, we are passionate about God's Word. We have created a brand new course for you on Psalm 119, a psalm that celebrates the Hebrew alphabet and God's faithfulness. In this course, we provide you 22 short videos, a practical study guide, and a beautiful PDF of the Hebrew alphabet. Every Hebrew letter has great meaning for us. And we believe this will help you delight in God's instruction. So head over to trochia.org to purchase or to learn more. Trochia Ministries is a crowdfunded nonprofit dedicated to Christian discipleship. You can take part in helping create more videos like this and other resources by making a donation of any amount at trochia.org forward slash give. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's devotional. I pray that the peace and grace of Jesus Christ be with you today and all week long. God bless you.